Hey everybody, this is uh, Mr. Munson, and this video is a general video on how to use the SOL Geometry Formula Sheet. Um, it's going to be uh, hopefully rather quick. It's going to make a couple of assumptions. One is that you understand the terminology from this unit. So if you haven't done your vocabulary words, that's where you should go first. Now, if you're watching this at the beginning of the unit, then some of the terms might go a little bit quick, and that's okay. You can always come back and watch it again. If you're watching it towards the end of the unit or at some other point where you realize that you're struggling using the formula sheet, then you'd want to go back and watch any videos you have not watched and make sure that you understand those basic concepts before coming here. All right, let's go ahead and get started. So first things first, um, again, this is not going to go into much detail. I'm just going to point to things on the formula sheet and what they're talking about. How to use it is all covered in my other videos as you move through this chapter where you're going to have to go back and review them. So let's just make sure you understand the faces of a shape of a solid um, are categorized in these two ways. They're either bases or lateral faces. Okay, so that's already been covered in your vocabulary words, and it's also already been covered in the previous videos. On this sheet, you'll see the letters LA, SA, VA, and you'll also see just a regular A, and they all stand for, LA stands for lateral areas, SA stands for the surface area, and V stands for the volume, and just a regular A stands for the area. Okay, so we're talking about um, area except for the volume. Now the lateral area is just basically going to calculate the number of squares it takes to cover the lateral faces. Now if you're not sure what lateral faces are, again I'm going to send you back to the vocabulary video and make sure that you understand your vocabularies or polite vocabulary words and just review it there. Same thing with surface area. Area, the surface area is the, the number of squares it takes to cover the entire shape. Um, that's the lateral areas, the lateral area faces, right? Or lateral faces plus the bases. So some, so I have uh, the S in parentheses there because some shapes only have one base. A cone is an example of a solid that has one base. A cylinder is an example of a solid that has two bases. And of course you have volume. Let's move on. At any time as you're looking at your formula sheet, and hopefully you've downloaded one at this point, you can do that by simply going to Google, typing in SOL Geometry Formula Sheet, and it will come up. Print it up, have it in your notebook. But any time that there's a letter here or whatever that you're not sure what it means, you look down at the bottom and there's a key. Well, just going left to right, we can take a look. This is the area formula for a triangle. Now, in this printout, you can see it's missing this vertical bar here that would represent the height. All right, so hopefully your printout came out a little bit better than mine, and there was that line there. Okay, so you have the area is equal to one-half base times height. This B and this height represents in the triangle, the height is from a vertex to a base, okay? So if I wanted to, I could measure a length from this vertex right here, A, to this base. And that would be my new height, and I would use whatever that letter is for, or this amount, okay? Let's go over here, and looking at a square, you know, the area that's um, this two-side squared, of course. The perimeter, the distance around it is four times S. Perimeter of this shape is uh, found by two times this side, of course, and two times this. Now, just as easy to find the perimeter of any shape is just the distance around it. So I could just add them up if I want to look at the formula or deal with the formula. The area, however, is length times width. Circumference for the circle is 2 pi r, and as I've said in class, these formulas sometimes get mixed up, right? We have that and, whoops, sorry. And it's uh, all three, this, uh, both formulas, this one's for area, this one's for circumference. However, whichever one it is, is based on where you stick the two. You see, they both have pi and an r in it. It's where you stick the two that determines that the formula should be area and circumference. Okay? We can tell that because this has pi r square, and area is the art of counting squares. That's how I know that this is the one that goes with the area. Right, and so, of course, the R stands for the radius. That's the distance from the center 
to the circle. D, another version of the circumference, is just the two radiuses added together. In other words, 2R, so that's D. And then the area is pi R squared. This is a parallelogram, and of course, uh, this shape is also a parallelogram. So I just tend to have a f uh, the favor of um, just memorizing area equals base times height. And this shape here, the height can be the measurement from one side to another because it's an altitude, right? It's, it's a right angle. Just as I was saying, this is a height or an altitude because it's a right angle. So this measures to a base. Okay, so you have area, base times height. This is the height and this is the base. And this formula, area equals one half height. It's the height from one parallel side to the other, not this way now. And it's from one height or one parallel to the other. And then we just add the two bases, whatever that distance is and that distance is. Multiply that all through. The volume for a prism, okay? So this is the formulas for any prism. So you have to be able to look at shapes and recognize that they're prisms. Now we covered what prisms are in a previous video. I'm not going to do it here. In other words, um, once you recognize it's a prism, they couldn't draw every prism because there's hexagonal prisms, there's uh, uh, trapezoidal prisms. So this is just the general shape for a prism. And this happens to be a triangular prism. So the big B here stands for the area of the base. Now the top and the bottom, or left and the right, if this shape was turned on its side. But you have to recognize which of this has one top face and a bottom face, and then there's three sides going around. It has a total of four faces. So looking at a prism, you have to be able to identify which one's the bases and which ones are the lateral faces. Now the um, the main shapes for the bases are always you know the main figure shape. Now the hexagonal prism, the bases are hexagons. In other words, when you're trying to find the volume, you got to find the area of the base. So you have to be able to recognize which side is the base, and then the height. And the height is always the distance from a base to the other base. The lateral area is the height um, the height of the prism, and the perimeter, which is the distance around one of the bases, and then. The surface area. Surface area is going to cover the lateral area. The lateral area, again, is going to find the number of squares it takes to cover the white surfaces in the back there. And uh, and then two of the bases, because there's a, a base on top and a base on the bottom. So surface area is the total amount of area it takes to cover the entire shape with squares. So that's the formula for it in the pieces. Okay, I just usually stray away from this because this is a prism as well. And if I understand how to work it here, a prism here, then I just use those pieces. Anyway, the L and the W and the LH, if you don't know what those are, they're described here in this picture. You just plug in the numbers. Cylinder. To find the volume of a cylinder, you have to do R, which is going to be the radius. Let's draw that in there. All right, so uh, the radius has now been drawn in here. So it's just a matter of taking the radius and plugging in here, squaring it, and then multiplying th times the height. And once again, the height is the distance between the two bases, so the main shapes of the figure. So to use these formulas, you just got to plug the numbers in and calculate it out. Now I've seen students uh, do way too much um, stuff here. All you got to do is plug in, let's say the radius was equal to 5 and the height, uh, let's say, was 10. And I just stick those numbers in, right? So I get there. I like to put parentheses around my numbers. And I like to, again, put parentheses around my numbers. And this one's going to have the height of 10. I can do most of this in my head. Since they allow me to um, sometimes put it in terms of pi, I like that so that it doesn't turn nasty numbers, this into a nasty number of decimals. So it's just a matter of taking the numbers that are in, let's say, this area and putting them together. So I got 5 squared is 25. 5 times 2 is 50. So this should result in 50 pi plus. Over here, I have 5 times 50, 5 times 10 gives me 50 times that 2 is 100 pi. So it gives me a total of 150 pi. Now, notice I didn't turn things into decimals and start rounding and rounding each step. I'm going to take it all the way to pi at the end. And if the problem says turn it into a decimal, at this point is when I do it. That way, I'm not um, rounding several times throughout the problem, causing error each step. 
So if it was wanting a decimal or rounding up to the nearest whole, you, you know, area, whatever, I would take 150 and multiply times pi and then round it however they want me to do. Now, since we're talking, in this case, this was the surface area formula, we're going to be doing with units squared. And if it was feet, then it would be feet squared or inches squared and so on. All right, the volume of a sphere requires you to know the radius in which you just plug it in. And you take that radius and you cube it. I usually use parentheses around this four-thirds. I'll open up parentheses, four divided by three, close parentheses, times pi, times r raised to the third power. Now, if it's asking in terms of pi, then I leave the pi off for now. And I go ahead and multiply the other numbers, and I just add a pi onto the end. Again, remember units. That would be units cubed. Surface area, same kind of stuff here. All right, let's take a look at the volume for a cone. So you need to know the radius. And so at that point, you take the radius and plug it in here and square it. Take the height, multiply it times that. Multiply it times parentheses one-third, and you get yourself a number. And if it turns out to be in a decimal, then it's a decimal. If it's not, then you multiply it uh, times pi, and you get it into a decimal, or keep it in terms of pi. It's all the same stuff. Okay, so lateral area is the L in this problem. That's probably the, the thing that a lot of students will have that's relatively new where you, do, you know, might have to go and find it. So to get that, let's say they told me this was a, a 4 for the height and a 3 for the radius. Then I would find the, the slant height, which is L there. The slant height, I would find that by using Pythagorean Theorem. And I've covered that in another video, or we'll get to it if you haven't gotten to that video yet. That's going to be in 11.2, I think it is, surface area and lateral in the lateral area. All right, and then you have surface area, and again, radius, slant height, radius again. And it's just a matter of uh, plugging the numbers in and calculating. Okay, so now we're looking at a uh, a uh, pyramid. And so this pyramid has a base, that's the bottom. In this case, it looks like a rectangle. It could be a hexagon, a triangle, a, a pyramid. Uh, a pentagon, doesn't matter. And so we would find the area of that um, shape and multiply it times its height, which is this one, and then by a third to get the volume. The L here is the slant height, just like we have over here. The slant height goes from the top down the side and it's perpendicular. All right, so uh, this line, this segment that goes from the center to the side and it meets at the slant height is called excuse me, it's called the, the apothem. And so to find the area of the apothem, or I mean to find that length of the apothem, you might be given it or realize that this is a right triangle. And we go back to our right triangle formulas that we'd use. It could be a Pythagorean theorem problem. It could be a special triangles problem. It could be a trig problem, depending on what other information that would lead me into that area. Okay, so big B stands for base area. And again, you can look down at the bottom of your sheet and it tells you in the key that big B stands for the base area. So you have to know how to find the area of, uh, you know, uh, a um, rectangle or something like this, a parallelogram. That's easy. But if it was a pentagon, you would need to know to find how to find the area of a pentagon. That's covered in another one of my videos. Or you can just simply look up how do you find the area of a polygon and make sure you maybe add the word apothem. And it'll give you a nice video someplace or maybe a workout. All right, that's it. That's all I need to show you. The backside is pretty self-explanatory. Make sure you look through that. If you have any questions on any of this, hope to see you. Take care.